Okay, Tom the Tosu, Jigui Vicarda, Misha, Owen, August Ben, Ben, Kona Statu. On the ball, Gramagut, on Sanchi, her father. Thanks to everyone uh, starting to join us, and we're jumping. <laughs> You. So Ben is our latest instructor at Bites as Irish. Um, and Ben, you grew up around Dange and Dangin, Dingle. Am I allowed to say Dingle, Ben? Plenty of people say Dingle down on Dangin, <laughs> compared to Sir Kirkurina. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we titled, I titled this um, video. Um, Gwailin Kirkagoina. Mm -hmm. So, Ben, can you enlighten us a little? And we'll get to um, people's questions who've submitted questions uh, to this QA. But, Gwailin, Gwailga, what's the story there, Ben? Well, it's simply a, a dialectical difference, um, a difference in pronunciation, I suppose, that people are quite fond of. So, Gwailga um, in most places, but Gwailin in Kirkogheena and uh, I had to laugh I heard somebody actually from Limerick yeah on uh, Sailor Yas yesterday um and she was talking about the Irish scene in Limerick um but she has links to Kirkogheena and she was talking about Cunra na Gaelge and she was calling them Cunra na Gaelge mm -hmm. uh, which I thought was interesting because that's a, a proper noun that's being changed from Cunra na Gaelge to Cunra na Gaelge Hmm. yeah so it's just well and that's just the way it is that's the way it is um so i i'm going to play a, a 30 second video i think we can talk over it so we won't say anything important mm -hmm. during it okay. but uh, we'll we'll assume that people can hear us um so some quick like tourist shots um mm -hmm. from times that i've been a tourist around uh -huh. kirk arena mm -hmm. so it's it's brand new, mate. So, like, those are the atmosphere, even special to own, near to me own. Um, as this an art year, and the cool me, the girl get gnawed or her, iron trough. So mm -hmm. last summer, I was on the beach, and um, a woman walked past and said, "Can I start to do it?" And uh, it took me by surprise, Ben. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean. I'm kind of careful about using words like magic, but even growing up there, I could appreciate uh, on a daily basis how nice it was. And like when I was going to school in Banner Terry, I used to miss the bus home on purpose so that I could walk home along the roads and just kind of look around me, you know, it was nice. Mm. Um, we moved down there from Dublin. And so I still have a bit of a Dublin accent in English. We moved down when I was four and we went to Fiona first which is in Prost Moorach on the north side of the peninsula um, and started school there in school in Everk. Um, I was sitting beside Dohi O'Shea my first day at school <laughs> <laughs> and then the following year we moved over to Bagnar Terig um, and we didn't really have any sort of ancestral connection to Irish and to be honest with you while I learned quite a lot of songs in the first couple of years because that's something that my teacher was into. I really didn't know what was going on for a couple of years and I didn't learn a whole lot else. Because what? of the language, is it? Yeah, yeah but mm. things kind of crystallize after a couple of years and I suppose like people like Lilith O'Leary talk about people not learning songs, that they take a song. It's not a conscious effort to learn a song. You're in a company where it's song and you kind of absorb it and it's the same with language at that age it takes a little bit of time but you learn it and you learn it well so that was that was my initial uh, exposure to Gwellyn mm -hmm. I went from there yeah mm. um just the the landscape like I have to say like a, the peninsula juts into the Atlantic mm. um for me it is fair to say that it is a magical place because when I'm there, I do feel uh, like a certain atmosphere. I feel, I, I definitely feel it when I get there, you know. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's, it's um, true. <laughs> yeah, 
from my experience um visiting and i suppose dingle's quite a touristy town so i personally wouldn't be spending too much time inside the town Mm -hmm. um still good to have a walk around but when you get out onto the peninsula further lovely Tashigaha and like Mm -hmm. Mm. so Ben uh, we've um, emailed people on our newsletter uh, last week um, for questions in this live Q&A so we'll jump to Mary who asked um, in Munster Irish is the lenition of MH or BH is it always pronounced the V and the the question was longer, so feel free to read out more of the question if you want, Ben. Um, well, that's the first part of the question in a nutshell. And the simple answer to that is yes, it is always V. Or if not, I can't think of an example, Devor McKean, off the top of my head, where it isn't. And the example that Mary gave was um, specifically words that started with MH or BH, like Vanishtor or Vor, depending on what comes with her for instance. Um, but it, it, where those combinations occur in another part of the word, you'll still have the V. So if you take main road, pre of Voher, you have P R I father O M H dash P H O T H A R, and it's pre of Voher. So yeah, essentially anywhere you encounter those um, letter combinations, Mary, yeah, it's a V. So, Anna I personally say Anna Wa. Um, mm-hmm. My Irish is all mixed up. Mm-hmm. Um, it leans towards Munster Irish. Mm-hmm. That's all I'll say. Um, but I'll say Anna Wa. You definitely say Anna Wa. Anna Wa, but I think even that second A, mm-hmm. Anna, is a Munster thing too. So rather than An Wa, you have Anna Wa. So you have a true combination there. Mm-hmm. Anna Wa. Um, but yeah, um, in Kirkurina and I would say in the other Munster Gaelthafts as well, Cork and Waterford, um, you have this Anna, Anna Yas, Anna Ba, um, rather than just the An, which you may have in other places. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, as we before we get to the second part of Mary's questions, um, Arnold wrote in into the chat. Arnold, do you agree? It's kind of start to. Uh, we love the banter in the chat, so feel free to ask questions and add to the conversation. Uh, we can't get to everything, but definitely, absolutely chat away. And thanks everyone who has taken the time to join us, Bio live. Uh, yeah. So Mary had a second question, Ben. Um, are there schools in Kerry where beginners can improve their Gaelga or Gaelin? Yes, Irish Kirkagaina in um Bannertarig, um run a variety of different courses in person, say classroom based courses that run over the span of five days or a week um, for different levels in the summertime. And Mary was asking about a beginner's level course. And as far as I can remember, that's running from the 2nd to the 7th of July. And yeah, there's the email address down there. And I think the last date for um, expressions of interest or um, that sort of thing was the 17th or the 18th of June. Um, But I'd say probably the most difficult thing to arrange for that trip would be accommodation because it's hard to get accommodation down there at this time of the year. But uh, definitely be a good course worth looking into and worth for anybody's interested having a look at the other different courses that they have for different levels. And I think sometimes they have sort of cultural aspects, those courses as well, where you mm-hmm. may write songs or you may go on a, a steward, Shandal Yichte, um, an archaeological well, expedition might be a little bit too strong a term, but a little kind of yeah. trip around um, various different archaeological sites in the area. And Ben, would you know if they specialise like in local Irish or do they bring in teachers from around the place? No, we, we can't speak on their behalf, but do you have any information? I don't know. Um, yeah. I do know some people who have taught courses there and they are West Kerry Irish speakers. Mm. I'd imagine that 
the grammar and such would be in terms of it would be standardized because mm -hmm. it is but certainly if you want to um you know in, even between classes you'll get an opportunity to talk to people and uh, with the local irish um and the the instruction or the the teaching itself will be conducted in um the local irish but uh -huh. okay the standard is the standard in terms of in terms of teaching things like grammar and such because in west kerry we have expressions that just go against the grammar or use of like on for instance on yeah but that's the way it is and you know that's fair enough you can't have academics showing up and telling a whole community that they've been talking the wrong way for two or three hundred years you know frankly yeah. they're not interested so <laughs> yeah well, Mary, thanks for uh, taking the time for writing in to us. Um, so you couldn't go wrong, I think, with Irish Kirkagina. No, no. Yeah. And it's a okay. nice camera. It's part of UCC as well. There's a new uh -huh. building. Oh, okay. Yeah. And even a playground. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll go on to um, Sarah, who sent in a question, and it wasn't dialect specific. How can I take part in Bites as Irish from New Zealand? So, Sarah, do good. Can uh, you As you said to me, kia ora. Um, so uh, you asked, did we have many um, members of Bites as Irish in New Zealand? We have a handful um, who've joined Ashter, our new Irish language learning platform for learning at your own pace. And... What Sarah is um, specifically wondering, I think, um, apart from the Q&A, um, as a GROW member of Bite Size Irish, you get an invite to Bite Size Pubble. Pubble means community, and it's our private learners community, where Emma, our community manager, posts daily challenges. But we have a weekly Bite Size Bio calls, and the purpose of these calls is to give you a chance to practice and speak your Irish, but in a structured way, we've got scripts and role for role play. And Ben, uh, you've ran uh, several Bite Size mm. BO sessions now. Mm -hmm. um, so how are you finding Bite Size BO? Uh, uh, what benefit do you think people get from attending Bite Size BO sessions? Well, I enjoy it because, um... Well, it's nice to help people and it's nice to have a bit of a chat. Um, I'm not in Ireland myself, so even my opportunities to speak Irish are limited at times where I am. Okay, yeah. where are you? We should I, say. I'm on the west coast of Portugal, halfway up <laughs> the, the country, halfway up the coast, the Silver Coast. But um, the nice thing about um, Bite Size Bio is it gives people an opportunity to spend time in the company of other learners in a very non-judgmental and friendly and helpful um, sort of way. Um, people genuinely get a chance to see each other every week and have a little chat outside of the, the scripted conversations. Um, and it's, it's a pressure-free way of learning, really, um, compared to more sort of classroom-based learning. Um, because you're not worried about not learning a certain amount in a certain uh, space of time. You can have a look at the scripts before and after. You can yeah. consider them afterwards in the context of the notes that I've made as we go through them. And you get an opportunity to ask questions about what's there, but you also get an opportunity to go off on a tangent and ask about anything related or several steps on in the conversation not related at all so last night we had pastimes and pets but we got on to insects and parasites and this sort of thing and more into sports as well that are you know what's the irish for american football you know this sort of thing different types of more obscure things and you know the grammar of playing games and how things change when you talk about um, the doing rather than the watching and uh, well the doing and the watching but basically it's just a nice pressure free way um, for people to spend company in well, spend time in the company of other learners yeah. mm -hmm. get a few tips 
and uh, it's just a nice, gentle, friendly way to learn, I think. Yeah. Um, I was interested because you came in fresh to Bite Size BO. Uh, mm -hmm. We got a fresh pair of eyes on mm -hmm. the process. And one thing you noted to me was like the feeling of community. Mm. Um, like people generally know each other or f are familiar with each other on the call. Yeah. So it, it's a nice sense that people know each other, isn't it? Absolutely. And well, they're keeping in touch anyway through the Pogol side of it, which is the, the written forum element of it and the exercises that take place on a weekly and a monthly basis on that. So definitely um, for anybody who's interested, there's company there within mm. um, the forum and within the Bite Size Bio itself. So that's yeah. nice. It's hard to learn a language in isolation, you know, mm. encouragement, but it's of practical use too. Mm. Yeah, um, so we're getting to answer Sarah's question. We'll get there. Uh, mm. But we had a, a great uh, team workshop uh, last week discussing, like, who do we help? Um, and geography comes into it as in it doesn't really matter where you are in the world. Uh, mm. We do want to help you. And I think people in Ireland, this is my experience, are generally quite surprised at how international um the irish language learning community is online mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um because it's accessible of course um but we're here to help people who are in ireland too now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to get to sarah's question um being part of bite size Pubble and bite size bio so our live bio calls they typically take place at 8 p.m on a tuesday that's mm -hmm. been our standard time mm -hmm. however we haven't announced it to members yet but let's say that um next week we're starting an experiment at bite size irish mm -hmm. for grow members mm -hmm. and we're going to try for four weeks and see if it gets off the ground a bite size bio session at 10 a.m. Irish time. Mm -hmm. And as the way the clocks are right now, in any case, uh, that's 9 p.m. Uh, in New Zealand. So our morning session that we're going to try out for Grow members, uh, depending on your life, Sarah, how you're set up, it's a potential. It's a new potential for uh, getting more out of bite-size Irish membership. Uh, ben, it could be people in Ireland as well taking yeah, advantage yeah, of the 10 on, It depends on your routine. If you're working in the evenings, mm. you're in Ireland or Britain, wherever it happens to be, yeah. It's good to have the option. Okay. Um, so there's more people uh, writing in the chat. Um, ben, is there are there any uh, comments there that you want to call out before I go on to the next question that was sent in? Cain Fuckle on out the moon is Charlotte. Um, I like no taller, no taller, no taller, like noted. No taller means exceptional. Uh -huh. No taller was excellent, was exceptional. I like Gadil, Gadil, you should Gadil, and uh, Gadil is a word that can mean devilish or terrible. But How would you spell it? D I A I L. So it can mean two opposite things. It can mean devilish, devilish and terrible, and it can mean wonderful and excellent. So it's kind of like, I think in Donegal, they may use Miltonach for something mm. that's just awfully, awfully good. But Miltonach means terrible as well. <laughs> You know, so it's a bit like you hear people, maybe young folk from London, saying it was sick. You know, <laughs> sick. You know, if you shake a deal, it was devilishly, devilishly yeah. wonderful and terribly excellent. Yeah, know? Ben, my six-year-old yeah. says that too. A few yeah. Years, so. Yeah. yeah, so and no yeah. thought. Huh? Am I spelling it right here? Uh, let me see now. I, uh, I N O father T F father L T H A. See if I can. Yeah, M A T A L T A. Yeah. Sinead. No tall. No tall. 
No Tolta. May not have an H there in the end. No Tolta. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Would um, I go on to the next question, or was there any more, Ben? Well, I can't have too many favorites, I suppose. Um, <laughs> no, there's nothing else comes to mind, really. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of have. It's nice. Instead of Kane Fall. Yeah, so kind of have like instead of Kane Fall. Kind of have. Okay. Uh, there was a question going back to bite size view, I think. Mm. Um, the the time in in EST United States is typically our 8 p.m. Irish time on Tuesday calls would be typically 3 p.m. EST, so minus five hours. Um, but the 10 a.m. one in Ireland, you'll be fast asleep, hopefully. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> there was a question from Sean. I'm going to bring it up, Ben. Um, I've got a summarized version of it here. Um, but you could read out more of the submitted question if you like as well. Mm -hmm. So um, Sean said, what elements, quirks or pronunciations of Kirkagreen Irish do you feel are inextricably or quintessentially linked to the land, sea and the people there? OK, um, <laughs> uh, right. It's an interesting question, Sean, and thank you. Um, I feel, well, I don't feel, I know, I observe that there are plenty of quirks of language and pronunciations in Kirkogrina that you don't find certainly outside of Munster. Um, you do find them within Munster and other places. But I don't feel that they are owing to connection with the land or the sea or the people, um, be it as we were saying, that the land, the sea, and the people of Kirkogrina are captivating and um, very stimulating. Um, I don't feel that the difference between Kirkogrina and other places is related to that. Um, the way I see the dialects is that at one time you had essentially one dialect with variations that were happening slowly as you move from one locality to another the way that you would have in english if you traveled from tralee to abbey field and abbey field to limerick from limerick to ennis and from ennis to galway you'll notice these little differences in pronunciation a preference for certain types of expression and words and if you keep going as far as donegal it will keep changing I think that that's the way that Irish was when it was spoken in the majority of the country um, outside of the pale, perhaps maybe up until they say the Irish language is in crisis in 1603 with the Battle of Kinsale. And so since then, the gaps between those, what we now call the Gaelic have been um, received, the gaps have been growing and the Irish in the places between them has been receding. So you end up with these places that are isolated from each other. And so the differences that were there before the gaps grew remain. I don't think that the dialects have evolved in isolation over that period. I think that the differences that were there are still there. Um, and one of the reasons why I think that is because there's very little difference between the Irish that you get in Kirkogrina, the Irish that you get in Bailavurna, in Cork, the Irish that you get over in Rhinongunach, in Port Oregon, Waterford. There's very little difference there. And the actual connection between the communities has been, there hasn't been a lot, you know, um, over the last couple of hundred years. There's been some as there would be in the course of a normal country and normal, but um, in terms of language being influenced by the um, terrain and by the sea and that, that's something that almost all Irish speaking areas or Gaeltachti would have in common anyway, say, 
Kerguelen in terms of landscape and terrain has more in common with western or southern Connemara than it does with Balavurna, which is landlocked. And yet the Irish in Balavurna and Kerguelen are more similar. So I'm inclined not to think really that it's coming from the landscape. Um, Mm -hmm. And then, like, I mean, some people do think that, and everybody's entitled to their view, but I don't see a lot of evidence for it. Um, and while some poets wrote about the landscape, a lot of people found it a very, very difficult life to live in somewhere like Kirkuhina, you know, before even Ryan's daughter, the film kind of opened it up to the outside world, and it's been kind of thriving since in one way or another, the dolphin and Star Wars and everything that's happened. But prior to that, a lot of people found the land very hard to farm. They found it hard to make a living off the sea year round. They found it isolating. They found the weather very hard to deal with. And some people were happy to emigrate, you know, um, or well, happy is probably not the right word, but um, it was an option that they embraced um, comparing what they had with what they might have in other places, America particularly. So like if you read Peg Sayers, you know, you can see it wasn't an easy life. People are falling off cliffs or maybe they were jumping off cliffs. Who knows? They're having to go down on ropes to, uh, you know, go into caves and kill seals for food and for oil for their lamps and this kind of thing. You know, it wasn't easy. Um, and so when you often not always when you hear a song that romanticizes the life there or the land there or a particular village there it's written by somebody who emigrated rather than somebody who was actually living there mm -hmm. and there's a curious sort of phenomenon now where shano songs that were written by emigrants who um they were weak they were um lonely for the place where they grew up have come back again with people who've returned and then their children or their grandchildren are singing those songs and it's a strange sort of thing because you might be in a pub and somebody is singing a song um, and you could look out the window and you could see you know or you could see maybe the townland up there singing so longingly about in the song but it was written by somebody in chicago or boston or something like that so it has a sort of maybe sort of cathartic value because you're expressing the pain that your ancestors had and yet it's kind of bizarre because these people themselves haven't emigrated and the thing they're singing about is right there you know it's a it's a funny one um but in terms of um the state or the history or the the quirks um, of Helen um, Harkudina. There is a book about it by Dermot O'Shea. Um, I don't know. I took down a note of it. I don't have it to hand here. Um, I think it's called Intanga Bio, Helen Harkudina, uh, Dermot O'Shea, published in 1995. So that would be a very comprehensive sort of view of the whole thing. Okay, so I'll just write in on Chang'e Bio, just that snippet of it, okay, for reference. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. like to, to answer Sean's question, there are plenty of quirks, certainly, um, and I can give you a few of those that I uh, made a note of, say, Nahena is Gachena, but you will hear people say Vinahena. Um, we have Tarna instead of Dara. One I got in trouble for when I was living in Connemara for a while is Cainteus, an issue. What age are you now? And it's Cainish in and in other dialects and in terms of on Um But that's something that people say, and somebody <laughs> reacted badly to it, saying, "You can't say that." You know, you said, "What are you doing? You can't say that." It's, well, you know. That's, that's what we say, you know. <laughs> um, so, Ictorluint, Ictorlu, Kanahev, Fachte, 
instead of fight to. Um, uh, you have Rodegen Tuch rather than just Rodegen and that T A C H. It doesn't really, it doesn't perform any purpose, but it's just a local custom to say Rodegen Tuch. Um, as I was saying earlier, Sachomra rather than Sachomra, Sachupa rather than Sachupa. You will not have no maid as a minute, it's Nyomat. 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 Um, people say other a lot for effect in conversation. It's like say, to say. It's like, um, it's, or do you know? It's other, just mm -hmm. at the end of the sentence. Um, nyather, as you know yourself, people are always saying nyather, which is, I don't know, but it can be used to express doubt about something as well. Nather will encourage the gut. I'm not sure if you're right there. Um, maybe, doubtfully. Are you doubting my nether? <laughs> oh, I forgot to put nether up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that was something like I've done very, you know, you end up in, say, doing a university course where it's Irish. So you're, it's a mixed group of different people from different places, different dialects. And it was certainly commented upon that the monster people were always saying nether. Um, uh, it's a very Mar useful one, isn't it? Yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. Mm. So, marachtant is another word that you'll hear. Um, marachtal, living, um, it can mean living as in folks in on this mortal coil, or it can mean living in a particular place. Um, but generally, elsewhere, people will say, I'm living oh, here. They'll rarely say Tom Igmarachtal somewhere, but often in Kerry Munster, you will hear people say Tom Igmarachtant Ermultin, I'm living in Bally Ferreter. Um, and it will be Marachtant rather than Marachtal, as you would have in mm. Connemara, I suppose. I don't know about Tir in that case. Uh, if somebody's having a busy day, they won't be Gnohoch like you'd be in other places, they'll be kuramach. So oh. a kuramach is a task or, you know, something you need to do. Uh, gno also is, like um, gno is business. It can be business in the sense of commerce, but it can also just be, can gno a hog and what business do we have here today? Um, but kuramach is what you're more likely to hear in Gaelin or Kuhine. Um what else do we have? A dirig, rather than yenif, dirig, rather than a dirig, rather than yenif. And we have saw pale instead of shea pale for church. Saw pale. Saw pale. Hmm. Um, and relating to, uh, I think, another question that we have tonight, it, it use the word tage, tage instead of tag for to go, like. Tadevada, Tadevada, go home rather than Tadevada. Um, and if you do go home, you won't be egg baila, you'll be egg baila, egg baila. So these are all things that, as you know, I've been working in print journalism in Irish for about 20 years. And these are all things that I've had to sort of cleanse myself of, <laughs> you know, because they'll just be changed anyway by the editor for the most part, you know? <laughs> so I was kind of, I was going back, kind of rediscovering these things, like in terms of distinguishing them from other things, because there are things that I've just learned not to write anymore, do you know? And um, yeah. so these are all these things like that you learn not to write over the first couple of years of writing for national media, because it's meant to be more standardized. Um, so it's nice to see them again. There, Dusna instead of Dena. Um, Rimish instead of Riv, and just just more kind of subtle things like Hanshiv, Hanshiv at Olavila, rather than Toshiv. But again, I mean, the differences between the dialects are more extreme because of the isolation and the geographical distance between them. But 
you will get these things in other languages in other countries as well but the transition is more subtle but certainly as a carry man talking to somebody from Cavan or Westmead I will notice these things as well my classmate who always had his bukes you know and so I mean yeah. I mean like it sounds like a lot of mm. difference but I, I would uh, argue that all in all, if you studied all the spoken word, like it, it's let's say mostly standard Irish. You know, there's deviations. There's certain uh, common words in Kirkagreena that you'd use a lot mm -hmm. that wouldn't be used elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But if you look at like the percentage of words being spoken, uh, like mm -hmm. the, the point I'm trying to make is um, the dialect, it, it sounds different when we're pointing out all the differences, mm -hmm. um, but there's much more in common than differences. Would you agree there? I would. And although obviously I'm speaking with my own ear, um, and my ear is a little bit biased, but I think that generally speaking, things are pronounced quite clearly in Kirkogrina. I think it's quite a clear <laughs> way of speaking. There's and, no accent whatsoever. <laughs> and, you know, I think it's just one of those things, you know, very quickly with different dialects, you learn that this word is substituted for that word and that's the way it is. And you just adjust. When we were in school, when we got our copy books, through simply in the start of the year, the first thing the teacher would do is open your book, rub out that word, write this in. So freshen is gone, homa is there, and various other things that would be in the standard. And that was it. You just cross them out and you write in the West Kerry version. You know, I've lived in places like, let's say, Cork and Bristol in the UK. They have words that they use for certain things and you just have to learn that lush in bristol means very good or good looking you know okay. and um a fla in um cork is it can mean two different things as far as i could see it could mean an idiot or it could mean somebody who's very attractive you know uh, if you go to mayo or Galway, you have a bjor which is a, a young lady you know, there's no way of me knowing what lush would mean in Bristol or if you're in Galway. Just the only way I know is when somebody tells me, like, OK, well, the next time I hear that, I know what it means. And it's just the same with dialects in Irish, you know. So it's just about uh, goodwill and making an effort. I think everybody mm -hmm. making an effort. <laughs> um, you had taken a lot of notes, Spain, And what we'll do is uh, we we'll link to the show notes later, uh, like this week. Mm -hmm. um from this youtube video we would have a blog post and um we would have all your notes with a lot of those words that you called out mm -hmm. very interesting for me because i wouldn't um be familiar with half of the words that you listed out or the variances yeah that you had there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i just wouldn't have been exposed to them yeah and then a lot of people are not aware of them who use them all the time because that's just the way it is, you know. But like things have been changing over the last 30 or 40 years, 50, whatever. Radio Nagelthach is a force for good, I think, in that regard. Um, it makes it easier for people to um, even to be aware of the existence of other dialects and the differences. Iraq uh, Nagelke is really good as well because. It's been bringing people together from the different Gaeltachts um, in a nice it's a sort of celebration of, of culture and language in different forms. And it's nice the way it brings people together. And so people might only see each other um, once a year, but they do, or they might just end up getting married as well, which happens too, you know. So that's a nice thing. Um, but, you know, I suppose what's been happening generally with globalization and with social media and all the rest of it is that the new idioms and the new turns of phrase are coming not 
from people traveling to lo a different locality or somebody moving into an area, but simply they're just being picked up from Netflix or from YouTube or from whatever it is. And whether there's an Irish equivalent of that is, is debatable. I think there is to an extent because the discussion around finding new terms for things in social media and online is quite lively. I saw yeah, you, it is. you did a video about burritos, which I thought was interesting. The burro. Um, but, you know, it'll be interesting to see where it goes. Whether yeah, or not it it. using them for them to spread, you know. Um, but even like, you know, yeah, in places like in, in urban centres, people, for instance, have Irish terms for different recreational drugs, you know, like kneecaps. Album was named, uh, it's called Three Cag and something. I didn't know what that is, but that is a term for ecstasy in Belfast, as far as I could tell. So, you know, these things are, they are there. You might not, you might not be in the right company to experience them. So. Yeah, on, I just have kneecap on Spotify. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say something, but it slipped off my mind. Um, so we'll go on, Ben, mm -hmm. um, to uh, the last question that was um, submitted, and that was from Darren. So I'll bring it up. I'm talking and trying to click. Um, with the verb go. Um, can dull and take, and you mentioned tear, be mm -hmm. used interchangeably? Well, no, but they are coming from the same root verb, which is take, which is go. Um, so dull is the verbal noun there. So the it's going. So when you combine it with egg, a G, that's the ing in English. So egg, dull, go, ing. And then. Egg, dull. Then tear um, is the imperative, where like the, the ordering um, form of the verb. It's the second, second person singular. Um, so tear, viola. If you're ordering somebody or advising or strongly requesting that they go, tear a violet of the hull, go home, please. So on yeah. that, to link it back to the previous, the first question, you mm -hmm. say a valia and not a walia. Yeah, so there's the V there. Um, so say a scenario where your neighbor's dog comes to the back door and you and the dog have a good relationship and the dog understands you, you say, Tear Vala, you tell the dog, go home, and then the dog goes home. And 20 seconds later, the dog owner's the dog's owner comes and says, Did you see my dog? And you say, Vise and so Akanish Toshe Egg Dola Vala. Knowing that it takes more than 20 seconds for the dog to get home because it's three minutes to the owner's house. So you're saying Toshe Egg Dola Vala. Um, the dog is going home. Um, like you can say, tame Gideon Thang and Gach Law. I go to Dingle every day. And you could say, be McDull Gideon Thang and Gach Law, which is, I do be going to Dingle every day. So in that present tense, I suppose they may be interchangeable. Um, so tame, I go, be McDull, I do be going. Um, but in terms of the question that was asked, um, the example was take. So that would be the imperative second form singular. So mm -hmm. they're closely related, but not strictly interchangeable. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. that makes sense? It does. And you've written out notes and um, with this answer so again we're going to add this to the show notes page um there was one question uh, in chat michael asked them um, about having a favorite chanuckle from kirkagrina 
But Ben, uh, would you be familiar with any Shannockel that are local to Kirkagwina? Um, there is a book, Shannock on the Moon, um, but I no longer have a copy and I don't have my books with me in Portugal. I just have a more general um, book and I don't know if my favourites are from Kirkagwina or not. I used to like when my um, teacher would say, Sminnick of Rish failed in a throwing. Mm -hmm. yes, the person's mouth often broke his nose, he would say in a threatening way um, in order to get us to be quiet. It's Minik Avrish Bail Dina Afroin. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. uh, one of my favourites, but I don't, I don't think it is a West Kerry one, is Law Milton the Mona, Law Four and Chaboshta. Um, okay, explain that to me. It's the day when the turf gets ruined is the day to harvest the cabbage so it's a rainy day so if you have your turf out drying and it rains then your turf gets wrecked but look on the bright side it's a good time to harvest your cabbage because it'll be nice and fresh and hydrated so it's just a kind of you know every cloud is a silver lining or but i just like it for the kind of poetry and the law milton the moan a bit and yeah it's nice, and I'm living in a cabbage growing area here in Portugal. Really? Yeah. yeah. So when it rains, the next day they're all out harvesting the cabbage. Just okay. Yeah. I like it. Good, good. I like Nihe uh, Lana Bashti Lana Bashti. That's a good one, yeah. Um, again, the kind of little play on words uh, that a rainy day isn't for the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, on Mahuna asked, how do you order a pint now? I went to Tig i Laherta, or Flaherty's, uh, in Dingle before, and I asked for a pint in Irish. And I think they were testing me, or maybe mm -hmm. I, I was just being a bit um, self-conscious. Uh, I'm sure I was self-conscious, but I felt it was more than that, that they Which were testing me. Um, or oh, Flaherty's. Yeah, okay. Fergus. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hi, Fergus. Can I start <laughs> I Tune. didn't understand. Huh? Go on, go on. I didn't understand what they were t saying back to me. Uh -huh. So I I got my point anyway, and I did order an Irish. Mm -hmm. But yeah, <laughs> I stopped there. So Ben, how do you order a point? It's just punt, punt porter, or punt Guinness, or punt bail bond, whatever it happens to be. In in Barnard Terrick, there's a brewery now in. Tiggy Cahan and Tig Rick, they have a, a brewery that they run between them. Um, so, depending on what you want, just Punt, Led the Hull. Punt, okay, so I'd say Punt, so that's interesting. Punt. Yeah. Um, Tig Rick uh, was a shop uh, when I was growing up. Mm. Um, but last time I was there at the bar, and plenty of Irish up at the bar. I loved hearing that. Yeah, it was my, my local shop when I was a kid, and now I do gigs. There. Yeah, now I do music nights there in film. So that's nice. Yeah, lovely spot in the world. Um, Ian Roger looks a great name with. Um, okay, I, I like William's question. Uh, KQ is far left and punk shave a no on litter H. So we're talking about. The, do you want to explain, Ben? Well, that's just from um, the old uh, Abitha, the old alphabet. Um, and rather than having the lenition or the Shevu H, the aspiration, you would have a little dot over the preceding consonant. Um, I mean, that's the... <laughs> <laughs> it's the million dollar question. I don't know. <laughs> uh, um I Ben, I have argued in the past that I'd love to see it um for the sake of differentiation. Now maybe that's just nostalgia. I don't know. Hmm. Um but I do like having um that difference and not because when you're in the land of mobile phones, hmm. you hold down the letter, you're not 
talking about uh, typing in codes like sure. I used to years ago on Windows. So the world changes as well and software can adapt. Mm -hmm. So I feel it's possible. But anyway. I feel it might be a retrograde step in terms of trying to encourage people to learn because it's an added layer of effort or confusion. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's a nice thing too. Mm. That's but a I good think, point. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So it's a personal opinion, I suppose, isn't it? Well, you have to be taste. <laughs> but you have to. Practical. We well, don't have to be practical, but yeah, I think uh, it would be few for the fire or to the fire for people who say so backward. What are they doing? Why do we have to bother with this stuff? And now they've gone and they put this punk over the B and the P, and you know, <laughs> yeah, well, perhaps we shouldn't be concerned with such things. Mm. Perhaps mm -hmm. um, you can't do anything, can you? So anyway, Ben, uh, we leave it at that for the questions. So thanks for everyone for joining in on the chat. Indeed. And uh, uh, come back to the YouTube show notes video at the end of the week. Or indeed, if you're on our newsletter, you can uh, you get an email about that. But um, on that as well, um, we have a, a free ebook on 10 secrets for practicing Irish every day. Since our motto at Bites as Irish is Gaelge Gach La, Irish every day, um, we want to help encourage you practice your Irish every day if you're in Ireland or elsewhere. But if you're an active learner, yeah, we want to help you. So uh, click in there. You'll have to make note of the uh, this address, but you can come back and pause later. Um, ben, von mir honest, I had tane vashin. For me and my guts, yeah. Um, so until next time, okay. Long and Vishakun next month. Gurmina Magwe Vakarda, Slang the Fall.